week we're talking about the Valentine's Day astrology and why you could have either the best sex or the worst argument of the year. So we are talking about four things today. We're going to talk about the astrology for the month ahead because this uh, podcast will go out on February 5, so I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown about the astrology for the month ahead. Plus, we're going to talk about the new moon in Aquarius and what that means, what it, what this new moon is all about, how to use it, and also why it's important in feng shui. And then I'm actually going to do a card, and I've decided I'm going to be using my uh, Moonology Manifestation Deck because uh, 2024 is all about manifestation. So here we go. Let's begin by a quick rundown of the big dates astrologically for February. So we've just had the last quarter moon in Scorpio. Now we're going to have this week the new moon in Aquarius, and that's on February 9 or 10, depending on where you are in the world. Then we're going to get the first quarter moon in Taurus on February 16, so a couple of days after Valentine's Day. So new moon, you want to make wishes. First quarter moon, you want to do a gratitude practice, okay? And then we get the full moon, which is the time to release it all to the divine. On February 24, we've got the full moon in Virgo. And you might be thinking, oh, well, I'm not Aquarius, Taurus or Virgo, so how do any of these affect me? Well, the fact is we all have these signs in our chart. That is just how astrology works. And if you'd like to find out a little bit more about that, uh, hop over to moonmessages.com forward slash free chart. And uh, what you will find there is a free chart. Uh, thing and all you have to do is fill it out and uh, it will give you a really easy breakdown i i created this chart and i created it in a way that i knew would work for beginners so if you don't know where aquarius is in your chart or you don't know where taurus or virgo is in your chart it will help you to understand that as i say in the diary uh, rightly or wrongly the first thing i think of when i come to write the february forecast every year is valentine's day so i don't know if there are any places on the planet that don't celebrate valentine's day but just in case valentine's day is actually february 14 and it's a day when traditionally lovers will spoil each other they'll send love notes they'll go out for dinner also if you have your eye on someone and you haven't yet expressed how you feel, it is traditionally a day to go out and send them either a, a mysterious secret admirer note or if you're really feeling bold. Some might say we should celebrate love every day. All the same, reminders are welcome and February 14 serves as a great day to tell your beloved how much you love them or even to send your ex some good vibes or send your potential new lover a card expressing your admiration. So now, what about the astrology for February 2024, Valentine's Day? Well, the night before is actually really explosive. On the one hand, it could be the best sex you have all year or maybe of all of your life, uh, but it could also be the biggest argument of the year, hopefully not of your life. That's because there's actually a clash going on between the planet of anger, drive, testosterone, sex, Mars and Pluto, the planet of transformation, destruction, eruptions, volcanoes and renewal. So how this is going to pan out really will depend a lot on the kind of a relationship you're in. If you're single and you're thinking, well, how does this affect me? I don't have a partner. I'm not going to be having good sex the night before Valentine's Day or on the day even. It could just be you have a bit of an upset with a friend. So go easy. Be aware that February 13, the day before Valentine's Day, the energy is really a climax or a high point for the month. And uh, it's a time, you know, great if you can get the sexy side of Mars, not so great if you get the angry side of Mars. Okay, so, you know, commit to having great sex if you're in a position to have great sex, so to speak, but also commit to working through any anger you might be experiencing in as healthy a way as you possibly can. I actually do a full monthly podcast for my Mainly Moonology membership, which the doors are open right now if you want to join. MainlyMoonologyMembership.com will get you there. But that's that's your, that's your what I'm going to give you for February in this podcast because um, I will go into all the week as they unfold in the podcast every week. So let's talk about the new moon uh, that's coming this week. It's the uh, February new moon. It's the new moon in Aquarius. 
It's actually a super new moon, which actually is in astrology. It just means it's taking place uh, closer. And the, and uh, if we could see the moon, it would look bigger, but we can't see the new moon. At, um, we can't see the moon at new moon anyway. So keywords. I always give keywords in the diary every month. And uh, keywords for this one, you do you. Okay. That's a thing. I don't know. Is it Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z? I've got no idea about all those things for millennials. Whoever it is, they say, oh, okay, you do you. You do you, mom. Heal a hurt. Don't say too much. Keep your cool. And the dates for this uh, new moon. In LA, it's February 9 at one minute to 3 p.m. Uh, New York, it's February 9 at one minute to 6 p.m. London, it's February 9 at one minute to 11 p.m. And Sydney, it's actually the next day, February 10, that's because of the time zones, at one minute to 10 a.m. So now a few things about this new moon. For a start, you may or may not know that many astrologers these days are using um, Chiron a little bit more than we used to. In fact, what I've said in the diary, which I really like, paraphrasing Rumi by calling it the crack where the light gets in. Now, that's a nice way to look at Chiron. Chiron is the crack where the light gets in. Chiron encompasses everything that touches us very deeply, including what we need to do to heal something. So under this super new moon, so the super new moon is taking place when the moon is both new and closest to the earth this month, as it is once a month, It's uh, but it's super close. Chiron will be approaching the moon's north node. Now, this is a very big deal that hasn't happened since 2008. The north node is all about putting yourself out there. It's about taking risks. And it's all about what we need to do to grow as people. Put the wounded healer Chiron and the north node together at the time of a super new moon. And it's safe to say if you want healing, then you're going to have to push out of your comfort zone. This week, if you want to get healed from something that's happened in your past, you need to push out of your comfort zone. Now, this sits really well with the Aquarius new moon because Aquarius is a sign that's a bit quirky, a bit unusual. And like I said, we all have all the 12 signs in our chart somewhere. It just depends where in your chart it's hitting. So this sign is all about individuality, eccentricity, surprising others, And actually not caring too much about what anyone else thinks, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing about Aquarius. And again, look at your chart, moonmessages.com forward slash free chart, one word, moonmessages.com forward slash free chart and see where Aquarius is in your chart because that's where you kind of don't care. You have no flying Fs to give. Um, If you combine this Chiron North Node energy with the super new moon. It really is a time to be who you want to be, to do what you want to do, and in doing so, start to heal yourself. Because, you know, Chiron is all about healing. Okay, like I said, it's the, the it's where it's the crack where the light gets in, but it's also very much about um, putting your foot down, deciding you're not going to take it anymore. And in doing that, you can move towards healing. The amazing thing is when you're fully willing to do you, as the kids say, you can actually heal other people in the process. As Marianne Williamson writes in her amazing book, A Return to Love, she says, as we let our own light shine, so as you do you, as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people to do the same. Now, I like to think that I do this. I like to think that I am uh, allowing my own light to shine and being authentically me, doing me. And I would like to give credit to um, my lovely friend and fellow Hay House author, Rebecca Campbell who wrote Light is the New Black and Rise is to Rise, amongst other books. And she was the one who liberated me so that I can hopefully also liberate other people. I saw her doing a video about whatever it was, about talking to your soul or, I don't know, you know, just one of her many magical, mystical things. She's very mystical. At a time when I, my son Louis, who's now 17, Uh, and a half practically Um, and he was probably seven 
And he just, you know, he was at primary school and I was very conscious of, you know, not being too weird. I was kind of in the spiritual closet without even knowing it. I didn't want to, you know, people to judge him because they judged me. And he actually went to a school that was a hybrid of a Catholic school and a French school. Now, in the French system, they don't allow any religion at all. You're not even meant to wear crucifixes or, you know, no head covering, anything like that. It's, you know, no no outward signs of your religion. But it was also half Catholic, this school. It was actually combined with a local Catholic school. And so as a result, there were quite a few Catholic mums there. And, you know, some Catholic people, you know, could be a bit scared of astrology or think I was an evil witch or whatever. So I was very much like, oh, my God, I knew I wasn't an evil witch, but I didn't want anyone to judge Louis because of my behaviour. And so I was kind of in the spiritual closet. And I remember seeing Beck Campbell get up there talking about the soul or whatever she was talking about. And just going, wow, she's like so authentic, so out of the closet. That's incredible. And it really, really inspired me to just step out of the closet. I'll just give you one other little story from this period. At one point I was actually uh, at a, in a shop in London. It was actually a really cheap shop. If you're from the UK, you'll know it. It's called Primark. And you can buy fast fashion there. I probably wouldn't shop there now because now I know so much more about you know I try not to buy as much fast fashion because it's just you know you just don't really know where it came from anyway I was I was in Primark and um it would have been probably 10 years ago and there was a time when people were wearing these sort of wraps and there were two different wraps there and one had a kind of a very conservative sort of like a Burberry print. If you know Burberry, it's a very conservative um, establishment sort of look. And one had a kind of a more shamanic vibe. It had like just some stripes, but it could have looked like a Mexican thing or a shamanic thing or something a bit more out there. And I remember thinking, oh, because it's Primark, oh, you know, because they're so cheap, they were like £10 each, say. Um, I could buy both and I could wear the conservative one when I take Louis to school so nobody thinks I'm too weird. And then in my private life or when I'm, you know, when I'm not, being observed by other people um i can wear the shamanic one and you know i so that's to the point that i was hiding my identity and uh and actually i'll just give you the little epilogue to this little period in my life eventually i thought okay because i saw bet campbell doing what she did and i thought i'm just going to be me i'm just going to come out of the closet and be me and you know, hopefully everyone can handle it and hopefully it won't reflect badly on louis and i remember one of the mums, Kira, if you're watching Kira, and I sort of told her about this and she said, yes, well, we all knew you were like that. We didn't care. So there you go. So all that is by way of saying, and I hope that now in my liberation to be myself out of the closet, I can give you liberation to get out of the closet. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. So Beck, Rebecca Campbell gave it to me. I hope I can give it to you, especially if you work as a healer, you know, you're into meditation and you feel you can't share any of that part of yourself at work or whatever. Maybe now is the time. This new moon is very much a time to be yourself, be your true self. As you come to make your super new moon wishes this month, think about what's the most you thing you can wish for. What parts of your true self do you wish you could embody and bring to life even more? So there we go. All right. And there, if you've got the diary, there's an exercise to do and also information about where in your chart this new moon is triggering. So there we go. So that is this Aquarius new moon. Um, I just want to take a moment as well here before I go on to why this is a feng shui moon and to do a card, just to say thank you to all of you who've been in touch mainly on Facebook, but a bit on Instagram as well, and also some a little bit in person. When I was at the Mind Body Spirit Festival a few, probably a couple of months ago now, but it really impressed me. It's why I'm still remembering it, but it's also been last week, this week, who said you really enjoy this podcast. You know, like we, when I do a live, it's completely different because I can see your comments and I can see you're enjoying it and you're into it and all that. I do these podcasts kind of in a vacuum you know my podcast producer Aileen is at her office 
uh, in the Philippines. I'm here in London. You put them out together and that's all great, but it's not, you know, you don't get that immediate feedback. And so it's so lovely that so many of you have written to say that you really enjoy the podcast. So thank you to all of you who've reached out. And of course, as you may or may not know, if you take the time to uh, review the podcast, it actually really, really helps us. So if you give it a review, give it a five-star review, hopefully, if you enjoy it, you know, just let people know that you enjoy it, share it with friends. That also really, really helps. Uh, giving it a review on um, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from really helps us. It triggers the algorithm so Apple put it out to more people and telling your friends as well, you know, I haven't. maybe that's part of coming out of the spiritual closet. You can say, look, I haven't really told you, but I really enjoy this podcast and let them make of that what they will. Very good time to do that. All right, so just a couple of minutes left, and I want to first of all by uh, start by saying that if you are into feng shui, then uh, you might be interested to know that, of course, the new moon in Aquarius marks Chinese New Year. Now, I used to write a column about feng shui in the Sunday Telegraph many, many years ago. Back when I was a journalist, I did it purely as a journalistic exercise. And uh, to be completely frank, I probably work more with Vastu these days, which is the Indian feng shui. It's actually the mother of feng shui, it came before feng shui. But, you know, if you want to celebrate Chinese New Year, then the new moon in Aquarius is the time to do that. And it's going to be the year of the wood dragon. So if you happen to know your Chinese sign and you're a dragon, it's going to be a good year for you. And uh, there are multiple ways you can celebrate it. There is one thing where I think you're supposed to do something like the first day of Chinese New Year, roll oranges and coins over the threshold of your front door from the outside in so that prosperity will flow into your home all year. There you go. Oranges, kumquats, tangerines, uh, common Chinese New Year food gifts because they're believed to bring good luck and happiness. If you don't want to roll them over your front door, just uh, put them in your fruit bowl. Uh, and I'm just looking here, actually, as a feng shui cure, it's recommended to have not eight, but nine oranges. Rituals for wealth on the day of Chinese New Year, roll oranges into your front door and uh, throw lucky coins into your house. So you could just do that and, you know, Again, you'll be coming out of the spiritual closet because your neighbours are going to go, what the heck is that person doing? And you can just go, oh, it's happy Chinese New Year. I'm just bringing myself some abundance and prosperity. And I am going to share a card with you. So I just want you, before I reveal the card, which I've just picked completely randomly, say now silently or out loud, or if you're watching on YouTube, put it in the comments or give this post a like, give the, the video a like. Is this card for you? Say out loud, yes or no, because if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, it's not. Okay, so, all right, here we go. The card is speak your world into being. So let's just quickly look that up. This is from my Moonology Manifestation deck, which is a beautiful deck that has every uh, card has something about how to actually manifest whatever it is you're asking about. So think about what you want. What do you want? Think about what you want. Do you really believe you can create it? Do you secretly doubt yourself? Do you believe you have what it takes? Are you preparing for failure? Here's the thing. You can't fool the universe. Repeated affirmations that you don't believe in are a waste of time. But just believe in your magic. Speak your world into being. Talk about it as though it's already happening. And I would add to myself uh, and then, you know, at new moon and then at full moon, release it all to the divine. If you'd like to work with the energy of this card, what you need to do is repeat after me silently or out loud, whatever it is you want to create. Energies of the first quarter moon in Gemini. Energies of the first quarter moon in Gemini. Thank you for helping me raise my thoughts and sow my vibration. Thank you for helping me raise my thoughts and sow my vibration. So basically this card is a reminder that if you really want something, you have to believe it and you should give a wide berth to anyone who makes 
you doubt yourself. All right. Okay. So on that note, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you have an amazing new moon week. Remember to get yourself some oranges in a fruit bowl or roll them over your threshold, throw some coins into your house. I'm back next week with something for Valentine's Day, which is another chat to that amazing woman, Regida Shaman about uh, twin souls. So if you missed the first one, have a listen now and then tune in this week because we go into that even more. And we also talk about uh, Pluto into Aquarius, which is obviously one of the major, major themes of 2024. So thanks so much for listening. Speak to you next week.